Hey everyone, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna be installing my favorite and most useful modification that I have on the F-22 on my dad's F-30. Let's get into it. My favorite modification on my F-22 M235i would have to be the Android head unit. And the reason why is because this is a modification that I use on a daily basis. It fits seamlessly into the car and I use it every day. It's so useful that even if I don't necessarily need maps, it's so convenient just to press the one button and type in my destination or use the voice application of Waze and say my destination or just use the maps to see if there's any road hazards or police or traffic on the freeway. That way I can find the most efficient route back home or to work. And this modification is so amazing, especially on the BMWs that have that small eight inch screen because the Android head units give you that longer 10 inch screen or 10.25 inch screen. For those of you who don't know, I recently purchased an F30 for my dad because he really wanted a BMW and the F30s, especially the Sulev models are super low maintenance. If you wanna know more details as to why I picked this BMW for my dad, you can click the link right over here. But I'm a little bit jealous here because Koasan is the same manufacturer who made the screen for my BMW. And even though that it's made by the same manufacturer, this screen has an upgrade. Previously, you needed a dongle in order to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but now that's all integrated seamlessly into this display. This is something that my dad is gonna find super useful. If he's charging his phone, it's gonna connect to his phone. He can play his music all the way through because this F30, the 2014 model, actually doesn't have Bluetooth music. This is gonna serve multiple purposes and multiple upgrades for this BMW. Now with that said, the first thing that we need to do is disconnect the battery. And when you first disconnect the battery, you wanna allow the charge that was remaining in the car to run through the circuit. As we're doing that, let's take a look at what we have in our Android head unit box. And in our box, we have our Android head unit, our wiring harness, additional AV plugs. This is for if you wanna do a front facing camera, our USB plugs that will allow us to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, a GPS antenna so that we can use things like Google Maps and Waze, and a very conveniently packed 90 degree angle aux cord. Now, before you move everything into the interior of the car, it's gonna be nice if you place in a microfiber cloth. That way, if you close it, you're not locked out of the car. However, if you find yourself in a situation in which you accidentally did close this, you can actually get in through the back of the car through the rear pass-through. Before we start taking any of the trim apart, it's gonna be essential that we lay down another microfiber cloth around the shifter. That way, we don't scratch up any of the interior parts as we're doing the install. And now that we've prepped the area, we can remove this center trim. All that you need to do is dig your fingers in the back and pull it out. Be careful at the end that travels all the way through to the passenger side because that has clips in it as well. Now we can remove these two electrical connections which gives us access to remove the four torque screws that hold in the screen as well as the top portion of the center control. Moving down, we just have to push in and flip out that panel, which gives us access to two of the bottom screws that hold in the control panel. And they're ready. I can see something that I did not anticipate and when we remove the center panel here and you don't need to disconnect this one. It has enough slack in the line for you just to move it to the side and even rest it on the passenger side seat. This is an MMI box. I'm assuming that, ooh, there it is. Uh, this is for a camera system. So possibly this car did not come with the stock backup camera and it's an aftermarket model. Good thing for us is that our Koasan screen will work with this and has all of the appropriate hardware to attach it to. So we can disconnect all of this. We will disconnect the input and output channels here. And there's a little lever on the bottom that you just have to push in in order to release them. So you can see right here that that little tab, that is what you push in in order to release it. Moving over to the front side of the console. This is pretty simple. Push up on that tab and release it. Let's go ahead and disconnect this. This is just some electrical tape here. And this is one of the key reasons why we did want to disconnect the battery 
just in case we had to do things like this. This is what will power that connection, so we need to undo this as well. And we have to disconnect it. So that was lazy. We definitely won't be doing that. And that is still a viable cable there. So good thing that we have some slack there. Now we can remove the T20 Torx screws that pulled in the actual head unit. Slide it out. What we'll have to do here is remove this harness from the head unit. And let's pull out this bypass harness which is analogous with the harness that we're about to put in. This is the fiber optic cable. Just remember that this dark green shroud is on the bottom and that we're working with the outer portion of the harness here. So just pull it out. And now that old wiring harness is completely disconnected. And if you didn't have any of that stuff to worry about, this is exactly where you'd be. The only difference is that this wire will connect up into the actual screen and here, all that you do is pop off the old wiring harness and you're good to go. Now there's nothing connected or holding onto our screen, so all that we have to do is lift up and that cable bypass to our old module is this wire here. Otherwise, what you would have to do is turn around the screen and you see that area right there where the connection is? Just push in on it, wiggle it side to side until it comes out. Now we can remove this old wiring harness. Because this is an aftermarket camera, we are gonna have to splice our 12 volt wire that we have with our Coasson screen here. And this is what we will join with that older connection that we had before. And all that we're going to do is put it into this connection here. And when you're using your video in from the Coasson wiring harness, make sure it's this CVBS in because the camera signal will go into the head unit and then up into the screen. And now we need to connect the optical cable. So for our new wiring harness that we have from Coasson, remembered that it was on the bottom section here and that shrouded wire was on the bottom, which we can look at here because those holes there are actual locking connections for this tab just above my thumb. So we can go ahead and place in that connection before placing that into our head unit. And the good thing is, is that it will bring the connections completely in once it's engaged. Now we need to take this end of our new wiring harness and connect that to our OEM harness. I'm gonna make sure that these small pins up here align with these small slots on the OEM harness. Bring it together and same thing, it will lock into place. We can now route these wires up through the ventilation system and up to where the screen would be. And as far as this AV connection here, I wasn't able to find heat shrink that was big enough to hold this connection together. So I'm just gonna use electrical tape. And honestly, this is all preference. I really do think that heat shrink looks more professional but electrical tape is a fantastic insulator as well now don't forget to connect your audio cable and this is what's going to connect to the aux jack on the underside of the armrest and you can make this completely hidden all that you have to do is start from the opposite side and i remove the tray here in order to reveal the slots that we have i fed the line down through the console and by removing the center trim past the wire through here, down into the crevice, all the way through. And you can see this is where the wire is now. And then I fed it back up right there. And that's how I made the audio cable completely hidden. Now we have two more wiring harnesses. One is going to be our AV cables for our DVR, but this is something that I am not going to do for this car. And so I'm not going to install it because this set of wires right here is already extremely tight. The second thing of interest is going to be our GPS antenna. 
This is gonna be for our Waze and Google Maps. Feed that up through the top here, just like that. Now you can see where I placed the GPS antenna. And the reason why I placed it there instead of near the rear view mirror or the rear of the car is because that piece that it's on, that little ledge is actually metal. And I'm hoping, just maybe, that that metal piece there acts as an amplifier and gives us a more accurate GPS connection. So far, it's worked really well on the F22. Now we're all set. We have all of our connections here ready to go. This connection will go up to the top here. Our GPS connection will go to this blue connection and our MBT will go into this green connection. And these two connections over here represent your DVR connections, the one that we're not gonna use, and the other one is for your USB connections, which you do wanna use if you wanna use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And rather than installing it that way, a better way is to lay it flat on the dash with the screen facing up. That way you can connect everything without it getting tangled up once you do the final install. And now we're all connected, go ahead and Push your screen down into place. And now we can start putting everything back. And honestly, this is one of the great things about having the base head unit when you get your BMW, because if you had the OEM GPS, this unit here would be so much bigger and it would be hard to fit everything in. And don't forget to plug in your USB cable. And this is what's going to allow you to have that Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You can tuck it away there, out of the way of the vents. And you can see that all that I did here was just drop that wire, bundled up the access, and here is where the wire is. So go ahead and close off that panel. Reconnect those electrical connections. and reconnect the battery. And it does take a while to boot up for the very first time, but again, we just disconnected the battery for quite a while. It won't take this long to start up every single time. And to switch in between the modes, you can see that this Android component side is working just fine. Hold down the menu button to get back to the BMW iDrive system, and you can do this to go back and forth between the two systems. The iDrive system is working perfectly fine, Let's put the car in reverse. And the backup camera is also working. Of course, the trunk is pointed up because we have it open, but you can see the grid lines are all there and that is fantastic. We have perfect integration from that aftermarket backup camera to our Coasson screen. And going back to the iDrive menu, if you wanna get rid of this nasty split screen here, all that you have to do is check out the video that I already made right over here. And just like that, you're all done installing the Android screen on your F30 BMW. And the great thing here is that we don't need to use that old dongle that we had to use on the previous screen in order to get Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It's all integrated seamlessly into this one display. And I'll be doing a video review on this in the very near future. And as I said in the beginning, this is the greatest gift that you can give any BMW enthusiast who has that six inch screen, is just getting started in the BMW platform, or they're just starting to tinker with their BMWs. Because this is an all plug and play system, of course we had a little bit of a mishap here because we had the MMI box in there, but if not for that, this is completely plug and play. And because it fits so seamlessly, maybe if your BMW is still under warranty, when you take it to the shop, they might not even notice. The greatest thing here is that instead of having the OEM unit, which has the stock map system, here you can use any map app that you like to use. And an additional function that we didn't have in this F30 originally is that we now have Bluetooth music playing through our phone. We can either do that through the hardwired connection or through a Bluetooth connection. So this is going to serve you multiple functions and it's something that you're gonna use every single day. Even if you don't use all of those additional functions, having the bigger screen with the backup camera makes a huge difference. So you're not only going to have a bigger field of view, but you're also going to have a better resolution when you're parking. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Leave any additional questions that you have for me down in the comment section below. 
and everything that I used in this video from the tools to the Android screen are gonna be all in the description as well. I wanna wish all of you the best during the holiday seasons and I hope that all of you are enjoying yourselves. And I'll see you all in the next video.